This video contains unsettling content and violent content. It is also not suitable for viewers who suffer from sibophobia, coprophobia, emetophobia, misophobia, ozophobia, and scalisophobia. Viewer discretion advised. Even in video games, there's times where we need to take time to fill our stomach with a tasty treat. But many times we have to settle for something more questionable in times of desperation. While often in games, questionable foods can heal the player, they're still not the first choice of the avid foodie. From insects, to cannibalism, to poop, uh, we digest the top foods you don't want to consume in games. Mm. Dog food. Wolfenstein The New Order. As a resistance fighter looking to take down a planet-wide fascist regime, B.J. Blazkowicz's access to decent supplies are hard to come by. As such, he can't be too picky when it comes to what he eats. While maneuvering through Nazi strongholds, B.J. finds relief in the form of... dog food? Presumably meant for the German shepherds that harass B.J. as he progresses through the game. Not only is this a clue that dogs are nearby, but BJ can also eat them to restore some health. While doing so probably won't be fatal, as the dogs seem to be doing fine eating it, but considering the world is in war-torn ruin under the control of a mass-murdering dictator, who knows exactly what that food is made from? Despite all this, the extra HP might be just enough to tempt you, assuming your stomach and nerves are strong enough for it. Mm. Trash Bin Turkey, Streets of Rage 2. When we think of a cooked turkey, we think of a filling and tasty meal suited for a holiday dinner. However, Streets of Rage 2 even manages to turn this concept into something far grosser. At the end of stage 1, behind the bar, are two bins that hold turkeys in them for health recovery. However, it's raining, the turkey is found in trash bins, and is eaten right on the spot. The idea of eating pre-cooked turkey out of a trash bin soaked in the rain and off the floor doesn't sound so appealing anymore. In fact, it sounds downright sickening, but if health is running low, perhaps it's easier to swallow the turkey and your pride rather than be left beaten by the local thugs. Ooh. Wall meat, Castlevania. In Dracula's castle, you might think the only food in this residence is blood, but there's something more disgusting hidden in the castle's walls. Meat is a common item found throughout the game, which can restore Simon's health. While you can often find them out in the open, there's some cases where you can destroy several breakable walls and find a nice plate of meat. It will have no ill effects on the player. The fact that it was behind a wall for who knows how long made it a popular meme in the fanbase, nicknaming it Wall Chicken even though, in-game, it's supposed to be a pork chop. Mm. Robo Sandwich, Team Fortress 2. How does a muscular Russian mercenary called the Heavy show off his moniker? The answer may be his badass quirk of loving the Robo Sandwich. This unappetizing choice of sustenance serves the same benefits as an ordinary sandwich, except with ingredients you'd more likely find in a scrapyard than a supermarket. While it indeed replenishes health in less than 5 seconds, its purpose over a bread sandwich has far more potential as an intimidation tactic. After all, if you were a robot, wouldn't the sight of someone tearing into a sandwich that looks like your comrades give you reason to pause? Unfortunately, any hope of grabbing this item today depends on whether you have a limited time promotional code from the purchase of a discontinued toy sandwich. But with the Heavy's collection of Gatling guns and muscles, maybe a blinking triangular stack of scrap metal that can scar your windpipe isn't necessary. Country Pumpkin and Hobo Surprise, World of Warcraft Legion. 
The land of Westfall was left devastated by the Burning Legion, leaving many refugees and not enough food for everyone. Mama Celeste of the Furlbrow's Pumpkin Farm does her best to feed so many, even if that means resorting to the country pumpkin and hobo surprise. Both of these options have no negative in-game effects and provide a means to recover health gradually. However, when you dig a bit deeper, they sound far less appetizing. The country pumpkin may sound perfectly fine, then you see the description as being soft to the touch. This is a sign of the pumpkin going rotten. Suddenly the country pumpkin is no longer as appealing as it first sounded. Hobo Surprise is far more mysterious. Even the description questions if it is actually edible or not. It resembles cooked flesh coated in something green, which is suspicious. If meat is so scarce, then where did this meat come from? Is it even safe to eat? And uh, why is it green? Suffice to say, you're better off heading elsewhere for a good meal. Unless you wish to change the cuisine of Mama Celeste. Mm. <sighs> Cooking Mistake, Paper Mario. How bad is this dish? It outright tells you it doesn't look very good. It's that bad. Obtained from Tasty, whose shop is located in the southeast part of Toad Town, this inedible mess is the end result of handing Tasty a set of ingredients that don't create any proper recipe. It looks like a bizarre mishmash of blobs that even a Yoshi would have second thoughts about eating. Consumption will restore a whopping 1 HP and 1 FP. Interestingly enough, this item has become slightly better as the series has progressed. Although its appearance sadly hasn't, evolving from a blobby mess to a fish skeleton garnished with a bit of salad. Mm. Void Mayonnaise, Stardew Valley. The rare chance of a crop fairy paying your land a visit is an exciting prospect for any inhabitant of Stardew Valley. However, the flip side of that possibility produces less desirable results. If a witch flies over one of your chicken coops at night instead, she'll leave behind a black void egg coated with red specks. Incubate the egg, and it hatches into a void chicken. The egg can be used to dye thread and other materials, or used in the mayonnaise machine to create void mayonnaise. Not only does this tar-like paste only appeal to Krobus the shadow monster, it also happens to smell like human hair after it's been blowtorched. Once consumed, its poisonous effect will sap 75 energy points. If that's all you have left in a local co-op game on the Switch, the game will softlock due to a bug in the game. Emperor Scorpion, Metal Gear Solid 3, Snake Eater. This game has many pieces of disgusting food you can consume, even a couple that earned the game's Snake Eater title. The most revolting piece of food you can find, though, is the Emperor Scorpion. These pesky critters can be found strewn about at the Krasnogorji mountain base, the mountainside, and mountaintop ruins. If Snake stumbles upon one, it's best to use caution to capture it, as they have a very powerful stinger full of neurotoxin. This can be used to poison any guards in order to sneak past them. Paramedic will tell you that it tastes very bad, and if you do decide to eat it, Snake will share a similar opinion. While it does recover a small amount of your stamina, there's no indication of you actually cooking, which means you most likely ate one raw. Mm. Nasty Soup, Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. After meeting with the lantern salesman Koro in Farron Woods, you might be tempted to try some of the soup in Koro's pot. Well, if you manage to light a fire underneath the pot, you're given the chance to try one of Koro's special recipes. Though he says that you might not like it, and not to blame him if you get sick. Once you consume the oily looking soup, the game will give you a randomised effect of either giving you a heart, or taking a heart away. If your 
brave enough to try and eat it with only one heart, you'll be restored with ten hearts. A similar thing will also happen if you have half or a quarter of a heart, where the soup will restore all of your hearts. Despite the fact the soup looks like oil, at least it's not as bad as what Koro says it is. Poison Mushroom, Harvest Moon DS. With how old the farm you're taking care of is, it's not surprising if you stumbled across a rotten piece of food. What is, however, is finding a poisonous mushroom. Also referred to as a toadstool or a pea mushroom, the poison mushroom can be scavenged in the wild during autumn. It can be eaten, but the player will lose stamina and fatigue points before passing out. By putting a wild toadstool in the seed maker, it yields spores that grow and regrow until it's level 100. While this is a long process, the mushroom can be sold for 100G. But during the harvest festival, you can be even more evil. If you decide to put the level 100 poison mushroom in the soup pot, it'll show your character eating the soup before falling over dead with the game credits rolling. Since you just put it into the town soup, you probably not only doomed yourself, but the entire town. Grub Soup, Terraria. The ingredients for this unappealing dish can be found wandering the jungle biomes found throughout the world. Using a net to catch three different crawling critters named Grubby, Sluggy, and Buggy will give you what is needed to whip up this concoction. Boil them up in a cooking pot and you'll be rewarded with grub soup. If the idea of eating something made of creepy crawlies that was slithering around the jungle floor doesn't put you off, the color of it probably will. Surprisingly enough, eating it will provide the plenty satisfied status buff for 10 minutes with no negative drawbacks. So while it may seem gross, apparently the protagonist finds it to be rather filling and presumably palatable as well. Even so, this game is full of food items to choose from, including far more appetizing alternatives like barbecue ribs, fries, burgers, cookies, and pizza. With that in mind, do you really want to go out of your way to gather up and chow down on a bowl of blended bugs? Rotten Egg, Resident Evil 5. Rotten eggs are a rare drop item from defeated homogeneous enemies found in the game. Rotten to the point of taking on a sickly greenish-brown color. Eating one of these will only serve to decrease your health. Of course, it was clearly past the point of edibility quite a while ago, so what sane person would eat this? Hold on! You need to be careful! On professional difficulty, eating a rotten egg instantly puts the player into the dying state. That's not to say you can't put these rotten eggs to good use, though. When tossed at enemies, they do significant damage and somehow have armor-breaking properties. As such, trying to chow down on one of these is a very bad idea. There's no reason why you can't utilize them as makeshift projectiles against the undead hordes instead. The Rotten Sandwich. Nancy Drew, Danger on Deception Island. Danger on Deception Island is a point-and-click adventure game, where you'll have to find out who vandalized a boat belonging to a marine biologist named Katie Firestones. Why would somebody do this? In the galley of the boat, you'll find a fridge and cupboard, containing a plethora of ingredients. The fridge contains a couple oddities in it, such as baking soda, expired mayonnaise, and a jellyfish specimen. The shelf which contains the most normal in-date ingredients, for some reason has a loaf of bad bread right next to a regular loaf. The game gives you the chance to make a sandwich using these ingredients, which you can either consume or ideally throw away. If you decide to eat the sandwich, Nancy will get salmonella poisoning, and you'll get a game over. Yeah. Ooh, suddenly I don't feel so good. You gave yourself food poisoning? Later on in the game, Kitty will request a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. While most players will make a normal sandwich for her, if you're feeling evil enough, you can give her the rotten sandwich, causing her to immediately get sick and cause another game over. You gave Katie food poisoning? No, I mean, not exactly. Something in the sandwich I made for her didn't agree with her. Mm. Poe, 
The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. When we think of food, one of the last thoughts would be eating a ghost. The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time gives you the opportunity to expand your palate to the spectral cuisine by allowing Link to drink down a Poe's soul. Poe's are ghosts that attack by swinging their lanterns at Link. Once defeated, their souls can be stored in bottles to be sold at the local ghost shop. If you're curious, or desperate, Link can guzzle it down, which will either heal or harm him by a random number of hearts, which can cause death if you're weak and unlucky. Only the regular purple Poe's soul can be consumed in Ocarina of Time. The yellow large Poe's soul can only be consumed in Majora's Mask with the same effect. Outside of its health effect, the idea of chugging down a ghost soul doesn't sound tasty or appealing. Plus, it's unlikely to be too filling in Link's stomach. <sighs> alien squid food and alien worm food. Fallout 3 Mothership Zeta. In the expansion pack for Fallout 3, the Lone Wanderer is abducted by aliens and must now escape from their ship. Found strewn across the mothership on medical trays are what the aliens have for snacks. Alien squid... and an alien worm. Yeah. The squid looks like a burnt, dried up jellyfish, while the worm looks like a giant slug with boils forming across its body and a sharp maw in the end. Despite the fact you're eating something that's literally alien to you, you'll gain no ill effects from it, even restoring 5 hit points. The food sanitizer doesn't manage to clean anything from it, since the food is clean to begin with. Yay? Given this is alien cuisine, it's anybody's guess how this would taste, let alone how it would sell in the stomach of a human. Lice life, oxygen not included. In Oxygen Not Included, you are tasked to help duplicants in a harsh alien environment and try to establish a colony there. For food, a common one beginners can harvest is meal lice, which comes from the plant meal wood. The guide claims it is a flavourless grain that almost never wriggles on its own, and while this already sounds nauseating by itself, you can actually make something worse from it. You can make this without the cooking skill, though it will take a while. You'll need 50 kilograms of water and 1200 calories of meal lice, which you'll then have to put in the micro musher. After a long period of time, the water and meal lice will form a lice loaf. Meal lice compacted into a dense immobile loaf with 1700 calories total, and the quality stated to be, well, terrible. This has no ill effects on the characters, but they will show their disdain for its taste. Unfortunately, if the water you use to make it is contaminated, it will spread food poisoning to your duplicates. While the food does last a while, for over 8 cycles in fact, it's best to throw it away as soon as you learn the cooking skill. Dog Salad Undertale. Throughout your adventures in the underground, you'll encounter an annoying dog who, as the name states, is mostly there just to annoy you. After you encounter him in a puzzle room, he'll leave behind an item titled Dog Residue. If you actually try using the residue, it'll fill up your inventory, along with a new item, Dog Salad. Checking this new food item will have the game tell you it recovers hit the poodles. Eating it will result in you healing a random amount of HP, from 2, 10, 20, 30, to even full health. This will also get you a specific dialogue box depending on the health, with the salad being described as either containing bones, fried tennis balls, tasting yappy, and even being literally garbage. With these descriptions, and the salad coming from dog residue, is it really worth taking a bite out of this when you have a perfectly tasty butterscotch pie in your pocket? Or dare I say, spider pastries? Oh wait, scratch that. Grubs. Sea of Thieves. 
While sailing the seas, you and your crew will eventually need to eat something on your travels. In the game, there's plenty of food to find and consume. But once your food supplies run out, there's really only one option left. Found strewn across barrels at outposts, sea posts and shipwrecks, as well as buried underneath sand, you can find grubs. These look like several worms and larvae tied up together. The game's description states that it's not good for consumption, and should instead be used as bait for fish. If you decide to eat the live grubs, it'll give you 5% of your health back, though after several seconds, your character will start vomiting heavily. The majority of players will never eat these little things, but if you do find yourself without food, desperate times call for desperate measures. Fish bait, Yakuza franchise. Available for purchase from various market stalls or on piers, this food type consists of raw squid, worms, vanilla clams, and more. No doubt tasty looking to a fish, they're significantly less appealing when offered as a food option for a human. While the prawn and lobster in Yakuza 5 will increase your health by a slim margin, in most cases choosing to chow down on raw, dead sea life yields predictable results. Doing so will cause a loss of health, while exactly how much you lose varies depending on what you choose to eat. While there is a practical purpose to doing this, lowering your health to gain access to certain heat actions, is the disgusting taste and nausea really worth it? Dubious Food, The Legend of Zelda, Breath of the Wild, and Tears of the Kingdom. It's not a good sign when a food item's name outright calls its own edibility into question. This food item can be created a number of different ways, all based around messing up your recipes when trying to craft your next meal in a cooking pot. Cooking food with only monster parts or critters by themselves, brewing elixirs that don't produce any effects, and trying to cook seasonings with no food will all result in this unpleasant dish instead. Not only is the food so disgusting to look at that the game outright censors the image of it, it also apparently smells foul. The sickly green-purple hues that are visible on its image aren't exactly encouraging either. All that said, it does still restore Link's health when eaten, with how much health he gains varying depending on the food used. Even so, in light of everything previously mentioned, you'd be forgiven for deciding to go hungry a little while longer than take your chances eating this. Mutated Toe, Fallout 2. If you decide to wander the wasteland and spend some time in toxic waste without protection, you'll gain a new part of yourself. What starts as small bunions on your feet will slowly form into a functional sixth toe. If you try to join any high society factions or groups with your toe intact, they'll kick you out because of how deformed you look. Luckily, the toe can be amputated if you go to a med center with an auto dock. The toe will now be in your inventory, with a description saying you feel a terrible sense of loss about it. Now, the toe serves no purpose, with it having zero value for trading or selling. There's one thing you can do with it though, which is to eat it. This will instantly give the player reduced health by 3 for a week, and poison the player by 2 points. Not only is this disgusting because you ate an irradiated human body part, but you just committed a form of cannibalism on yourself! The game will even tell you how much you messed up by saying, you just ate your own effing toe. Cryptobiotes, Death Stranding. You may have heard of a little microorganism called a water bear. In Death Stranding, a surprisingly valuable resource happens to be the cryptobiote, a larger species similar to water bears. The cryptobiotes may seem like nothing more than disgusting maggots, but swallowing the slimy white cretins, past the gag reflexes, will add 25 blood to your body. 
Meanwhile, eating the maggots harvested by the novelist's son will induce a heavy drug-like dream effect. Not the ideal lunch to take with you on the road. They are found in coral formations in the wilderness, as well as through a more interesting method. More cryptobios will be attracted to areas that have been urinated on by those who previously ingested cryptobiotes. This species may be good for the blood, but what about the digestive system itself? Helpful, potent, and rather miraculous. Mm. Rotten pizza spoiled me. Dead rising. Considering the zombie apocalypse is underway, do you really want to add food poisoning to your list of problems? Amongst the many food items Frank can pick up and carry around to restore health, the pizza and meat are often uncooked and raw when you first find them. Of course, carrying unrefrigerated raw foodstuffs around with you for too long eventually means that they're gonna go bad. This takes around 4 hours of in-game time for the pizzas and 3 hours for the meat. After that point, the pizza becomes rotten and the meat spoils, with flies constantly buzzing around both. Their healing potential also takes a hit, only being able to restore one block of health instead of multiple. The major drawback is that it gives Frank stomach cramps that incapacitate him for a short time, all the while dropping whatever weapon he is currently holding. Given you're surrounded by thousands of ravenous zombies looking to have you for lunch, this is a problem. <sighs> Maggots, Mad Max 2015. The apocalypse has come and gone and the world has been reduced to a radioactive wasteland, so you have to eat whatever you can find. Some of the delicacies Max can chow down on include cans of dog food and random mutant critters he encounters out in the desert. These seem more appetizing compared to the handful of maggots he plucks out of the ribcage of a rotting corpse he can find lying forgotten in the desert. While what would already be revolting enough as it is, there are other health-related reasons why this <laughs> would be a bad idea. Considering you have no way of knowing exactly what killed this unfortunate soul, they may have succumbed to some kind of uh, infectious disease. If you have the stomach for it, there are 15 of these critter-laden corpses to be found scattered around the wasteland. Dining out on all of them gives you the achievement, you are <laughs> what you eat. Mm. Raw Meat Dumpling, Elden Ring In a game where you're up against many fantastical beasts, you'll have to restore your health somehow. You can find three different types of consumables that can restore your character's health. These include a flask of Crimson Tears, flask of Wondrous Physique, and a Raw Meat Dumpling. The food itself looks like a human or some sort of monster brain wrapped in cloth. The description of it claims not recommended for those who prefer to know the origin of their meats. This grotesque piece of meat can restore 50% of your health, but it'll poison the player, slowly draining their health. With how difficult many of the game's bosses are, this could be a death sentence for some players. The food can often be found dropped by a living jar, a walking jar with human body parts inside. The best thing that can be done with this piece of meat is to be thrown at enemies to distract them. Mm. Rotten Flesh and Spider Eyes, Minecraft. In the world of Minecraft, you got stuff like bread, cookies, cakes, and cooked meats on the table. So munching on an arachnid's eyeball is a really gross alternative. Attained by killing the large spiders that wander the world, eating one won't do your health any favors. While it may restore your food bar slightly, it'll also afflict you with the poison stats effect, sapping your health for a short time. The rotten flesh obtained by slaying zombies isn't any better. Eating it will likely afflict you with the hunger stats effect, draining your food bar quickly for a short period. Given that you've just eaten a chunk of decaying flesh that was attached to a shambling corpse, you're going to want something better to get rid of that horrible flavor. Since spider eyes and rotten flesh can serve much more practical purposes as potion ingredients and dog taming food respectively, leaving them in your inventory and out of your stomach is a much better decision to make. Mm. 
Potatoes and Toilet, Bioshock Infinite. While it's important to keep your energy levels up in the middle of a physically demanding situation, that doesn't make every food you come across worthy of consumption. Booker can find many food items to restore health in the game. One that should definitely be avoided both for the sake of your health and your pride is the potatoes you can find in a public toilet in Colombia. Whereas most potatoes Booker can eat and restore health, these ones instead decrease it, on account of them being, well, fish out of a toilet bowl. Considering the average toilet can harbor tens of thousands of strains of bacteria, it's a borderline miracle eating those only causes a small health loss. Regardless of how hungry you are, its best interest is to give this a miss, unless you want to spend the rest of your journey stuck over a toilet. Mm. Critters, Resident Evil 7, End of Zoe. The Baker family is certainly no stranger to some interesting culinary creations throughout Resident Evil 7. However, the End of Zoe DLC goes a step further with consumable critters. There are three kinds of critters available, centipedes, grubs, and crawfish, all of which are still very much alive and wriggling when we see Joe chow down on them. Each one fully animated in all its nauseating glory, the critters function as healing items similar to herbs in the base game. Centipedes can be found under rocks, grubs are found in trees, and crawfish found near water. While they will allow Joe to proceed on his path to save Zoe, one must have an iron stomach to scarf them down as Joe does. Mm. Chocolate and Scat Conquers Bad Fur Day Chocolate is a famous food found all over the world. In Conquers Bad Fur Day, these can be found strewn around levels restoring the player's health. In the Windy chapter, Conquer enters the poo cabin and meets with a dung beetle, who instructs him to enter the trap door and get the cows to poop. This way, the dung beetle can make Conquer a ball of poop to venture towards Poo Mountain. Once Conquer gives the cows prune juice, they end up depositing their load in the center of the arena. The raging bull ends up crashing through the roof, and if you jump down that same hole, you'll end up swimming in an extremely disgusting pool of scat. Deep within this area are bars of chocolate that the player can actually eat. Besides giving the player some mental scars, it acts the same as any piece of chocolate found in the game. While it's understandable that you'll need to replenish your health after a difficult boss or puzzle, there are limits to what the average person should do in desperate times. Grimy Food Pokemon Mystery Dungeon the end result of inadvertently stepping on a grimy trap while exploring a dungeon is one or more of the team's food items spoiling, becoming grimy food. This pile of purple goop is said to be food covered in filthy grime. While eating this will fill you, it will also likely cause a debilitating status effect, such as burning, paralysis, or poisoning. All of these will make getting to the next floor significantly harder so you'd be far better off eating something else unless it's your only option. Some Pokemon with the gluttony or survivalist abilities may be able to bypass the negative effects, but that's not a guarantee. Even trying to pawn these off to the Kecleon merchants won't do much good, as they only sell for one Poke. For all the bravest or most desperate explorers, this item won't be used for anything more than clogging up your inventory. Marguerite's Home Cooking, Resident Evil 7, Band Footage, Volume 1. The Band Footage DLC collection contains several new stories, one of which is titled Bedroom. Here, Clancy Jarvis is trapped in one of the Baker family bedrooms and must try to escape from Marguerite. In the beginning of the story, Marguerite hands Clancy a bowl of her home cooking, which looks like a mix of a viscous black liquid and mold floating in it. If you decide to consume some of the food, Clancy will immediately puke it out, taking damage. 
You're given the chance to eat the food three times, though the third time will result in Clancy puking blood before dying, resulting in a game over. Midway through your escape attempts, Marguerite will come back with a new piece of cooking, a pot full of mold and what appears to be human organs. Oh god, I love home cooking. Eating this foul meal will result in the same effect as eating the appetizer, though you only get to eat this once. <laughs> Yummy. Mm. Blowfly meat, rat roach meat. Fallout 3. Blowflies and rad roaches are two common pests you'll encounter in the capital wasteland. Both of them can be easily killed, with the only item you can get from them being a piece of their flesh. While they're not the best consumables to have in the game, they do restore 5 points of your health, 6 if you put it in a food sanitizer. Sadly, no sanitizer will remove the radiation they have, with the rad roach having 2 rads and the blowfly having 3 rads. If one of your main sources of food is man-sized irradiated insects that have probably been in many pieces of filth, it's a good showcase on how dangerous and vile the world you're in is. Be sure to hold your nose and endure the taste as you wait for that disgusting crunch. Mm. E.D.E.'s Used Gum Final Fight It's a piece of used chewing gum. Does any more need to be said? Eh. Found at the end of the game's west side stage, this item belongs to EDE, a corrupt cop in league with the villainous Mad Gear Gang. Edie, obviously expecting you, spits out his gum, possibly to avoid choking on it. What he probably wasn't expecting was the player character picking his gum up and eating it in order to restore their health. Setting aside the fact that you're eating something that's already been in someone else's mouth, this piece of gum has been picked up from the ground in a busy looking street. As such, it's likely covered in dirt, muddy rainwater, and who knows what else. Interesting enough, picking it up while at full health actually yields a reward of its own, in the form of 42,910 points. A reference to developer Akira Nishitani's birthday, September 10th, 1967. Mm. Gems and Ore, Scrap Metal, Soap, <laughs> Elder Scrolls Free, Morrowind. Alchemy in Morrowind calls for experimentation and sampling with ingredients. Unfortunately, testing for their properties comes at the player's own risk. Even if losing a handful of teeth from eating gems and ore doesn't feel like a drawback, the damage to certain stats certainly will. Scrap metal from locations such as Dwemer Constructs also has interesting side effects manifesting as lightning and defensive stats, along with intelligence replenishing. It takes a chunk out of health as well, so it would be best to prepare for the risk. Meanwhile, slowed soap is a rare ingredient that can be found only from certain town vendors. The slowed soap itself is made from the larvae of the slug creatures which bear the same name. It helps in creating Restore Ability, Restore Agility, Fortify Agility, and Fire Shield Potions. That is, if you can stomach it. Even if you can, you'll have to ask if it's worth the slimy trouble when it drains your personality. Monster meat. Don't starve. As the name suggests, Don't Starve has a heavy focus on keeping fed using all manner of meats and crops to survive the night. However, monster meat is a more questionable choice of meal. Acquired as a drop from monster mobs, primarily from spiders, this meat looks like a purple drumstick with black hide. In its raw state, it will harm health and sanity while helping to fill your stomach. Only Weber and Wilbur are exceptions to this. If you feed four of them to the pigmen, they will turn into monstrous were-pigs, indicating how harmful this meat can be. Considering this meat comes from monsters, its disturbing colour and actively harmful to eat, 
one can only guess just how disgusting it tastes. Still, if you're about to starve, perhaps it's best to chance the monster meat just to survive another day. Dead rat, insects, rotten food, worm, Project Zomboid. When the world has gone to hell, you're willing to do anything to survive another day. Project Zomboid provides some rather desperate options for your consumption displeasure. Fresh foods like fruit, vegetables and meat products left unrefrigerated for too long will eventually go rotten. While you can consume them, doing so will make you unhappy bored and sick, which can possibly be lethal with meat products. For the incredibly desperate, there is the option of dead rats and insects to dine on. Rats can be found in mouse traps in urban areas and eaten raw if you're truly in need. However, you're liable to get very sick and pick fur out of your teeth by the end of it. Though you can butcher a rat to get small animal meat that is safer to cook, and dine on. Insects and worms can be found when foraging in the wild and are primarily used as bait for fishing. However, the starving survivor may eat them for very minor hunger satisfaction at the cost of happiness. While it may be better than succumbing to the zombie hunger of human flesh, rotten food, insects and worms are hardly a good substitute just to stay alive for another day of hell. Human Corpses, Alona. Exploring the vast world of Alona will send you on a variety of quests and will pit you against many challenges. One such challenge is warding off starvation during your adventure, so you'll need to keep a ready supply of food handy. Should you become desperate enough, you can resort to eating nearby human corpses for a touch of cannibalism. This will cause your character to go insane, which carries a variety of negative effects, but it will restore some of your health in a pinch. There is a small chance of developing a mutation that will remove the negative effects of eating corpses going forwards should you desire such cuisine. While it may satisfy your stomach briefly, it will leave you a mental mess as you contemplate your dietary choices. Super Failed Dish, Rune Factory 3. How do you screw up worse than the failed dish? The Super Failed Dish, that's how. Occasionally obtained from enemy drops or cooking attempts that go awry, this thing is a culinary disaster of epic proportions. The regular failed dish is described as tasting pretty bad and looking like a failed char burnt attempt at cooking. So how do you make something even worse? Case in point, eating the super failed dish will cause a massive 80% decrease in health and a 25% reduction in all stats for a brief time. It's so inedible that tossing it at enemies actually causes them to take damage. This is a better use for the super failed dish as eating it on low health will cause you to pass out. Mm. Feces. Ark Survival Evolved. When food gets scarce, you may be tempted to take desperate measures. But would you really sink so low as to eat poop? Ark Survival Evolved gives you this disgusting option. Feces is, as you would expect, a brown lump of poop which is dropped by most living creatures, including the player. Its main function is to fertilize for farming, but was also intended as a means to kill off a player that gets stuck in the terrain. Depending on what dropped the questionable meal, it will do varying amounts of HP damage, except for the unicorn residue that actually heals the player on the mobile version. I don't think an explanation is needed as to why the idea of eating feces is disgusting on every level, Burning Eyeballs, Cacti Ice Cream, Oculamon, Raw Tentacle, Spiky Cookies, Toxic Tart, Starbound. Exploring the universe is bound to lead to discovering new and interesting cuisine to dine upon. Yet, not all discoveries will appeal to the taste buds as seen in Starbound. 
Out of the many food options, raw tentacle, aculamon, and toxic tart seem particularly revolting to consider. Burning eyeballs are created from combining an oculamon and chili. As disgusting as it looks, it is quite literally an eyeball on a skewer, presumably dipped in chili sauce. Eating it causes fire damage to the player for a few seconds. This is the standard recipe that the Florins can learn, whereas the other races will need to find a blueprint. Cacti ice cream is the creation of combining a snowball, cactus, sugar, and milk. Despite the description stating that the taste is prickly, a buff effect is added to the player when they consume one. Thorns extend from the player's body over a set amount of time that will deal damage to enemies who come in contact with them. Oculamon are a form of crop that can be grown or found naturally on mutated planets in the eyepatch mini-biome. The crop is described as sour, which may seem reasonable enough until you consider that it resembles a giant eyeball constantly staring at you. There is something unnerving about eating a meal that stares back at you. Raw tentacles are best cooked to prevent food poisoning, yet it's possible to eat it in its raw, slimy, squishy, and nauseating state, which will cause poison damage over time. However, you can only buy them from merchants. Spiky cookies are a combination of an egg, cactus, wheat, milk, and sugar. Based on the picture, the cookies are coated in cactus thorns. However, despite its appearance, the thorn buff is also applied here when a player consumes one. Toxic tarts are cooked from a combination of alien fruit, wheat, and toxic top jam the latter which provide buffs to energy and low gravity, but at the cost of being poisoned. While it has positive effects, it is still very much deadly with its poison that can kill weakened explorers. Perhaps you're better off cutting your adventure short and stop off at the local store for something a bit more stomach friendly. <sighs> Bowl of poop, deadly dish, and minced follower meat. Cult of the Lamb. Building up a cult will require considerable effort, especially when you need to feed your flock. Should you become desperate or simply cruel, you can resort to three nasty meals. For risk takers is the deadly dish made from follower meat, fertilizer and grass that carries a 75% chance of killing the follower. Though it does make the follower drop a bunch of resources, it's hardly going to prove a tasty treat with fertilizer mixed in with your fellow cultists. For those seeking a protein dish, there is the minced follower meat, which is made from follower meat and bones. Cannibals will suffer no ill effects from eating their fellow cultists, but everyone else is liable to get sick and lose faith. The leader lamb will also throw up should he indulge in his cannibalistic choice. For the truly depraved, there is the bowl of poop which is made from fertilizer. Carrying a 50% chance of causing illness and damaging a follower's faith, there are a few reasons as to why you should seek to feed poop to your cult. None of these free meals really sound appealing, but should you be desperate or sadistic enough, then the options are there. To risk death, become cannibals or eat poop, all in the name of the lamb. Ooh. Ectoplasm, human heart, human skin, minotaur horn, mort flesh, ogre's teeth, scamp skin, troll fat, Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion. Even the most stalwart adventurer needs to fill their stomach to stay strong. However, should you be curious or desperate, you can dine on some of the alchemy's reagents you have gathered. The most disgusting choices feature human skin, human hearts, minotaur horns, mort flesh, ogre's teeth, scamp skin, troll fat, and ectoplasm. Human hearts will restore some health, and human skin damages magicka. But the real horror is the fact you're engaging in cannibalism to discover this, so is it really worth it? Ectoplasm causes shock damage when consumed. Considering this is ghost residue, it's anyone's guess how this sloppy, cold substance must taste when swallowed. Minotaur horns can restore the will stat, but nonetheless is a hard and tough horn stripped fresh from a minotaur. Most likely it will be hard to swallow and chew. 
Mort flesh causes fatigue, which may not seem too bad until you realise this comes from zombies. It's likely very rotten and tastes disgusting due to its undead nature. Ogre's teeth causes intelligence damage, which is pretty harmful on its own, but when you consider this had to be ripped out of an ogre's mouth is enough to put anyone off. Scamp skin causes magicka damage and is found off the demonic imp-like scamp. Considering it looks like tough, leathery hide, it's doubtful this is easy to snack on raw. Troll fat is found from trolls and causes agility damage when eaten. Eating raw fat alone sounds gross, but considering this came from a troll, sounds gross, looks gross. All things considered, you're more likely to lose your lunch than satisfy your stomach if you choose to dine on any of these grotesque delicacies. Alright. Bear Claws, Bee, Boar Tusk, Briar Heart, Dart Wings, Eye of a Sabred Cat, Falmer Ear, Giant's Toe, Hag Raven Claw, Hawk Beak, Ice Wraith Teeth, Vampire Dust, The Elder Scrolls V, Skyrim. Oh. The land of Skyrim has many delicious dishes to satisfy the stomach and fuel the soul. But if we explore the regions of alchemy, there are some interesting things that you can consume. Some come from a variety of creatures, but there are a lot of distasteful choices. The bee restores stamina, but it's questionable how willing the player is to eat an entire bee, stinger and all. Vampire dust makes you invisible, however, since it is dropped by vampires and described as earthy flavor, calls into question exactly what you're eating. Briar hearts restore magicka, but are also used as a substitute for a human heart on the Forsworn, so basically you're eating a fresh heart. So take that as you will. The claws of the ghastly hag raven pass some of its inherent magic resistance when consumed, but I'm sure trying to chew and swallow such a thing would test your resolve and your gag reflex. The eye of the powerful saber cat convey a stamina restoration, but are at the likely cost of your taste buds and digestion. The same can be said for the hawk's beak, though I'd question the taste of fresh beak ripped from the majestic hawk. Dart wings convey a variety of positive effects, depending on the color, but nonetheless remain an intact dragonfly. Okay, giant's toes damage stamina when eaten and are found on the bare feet of giants. God only knows how disgusting that tastes considering it's uncooked and giants wear no shoes. Which means you're also getting a nice bonus buffet of the accumulation of everything that giant has put that toe through. Moving on. Bear claws, boar tusks, and ice wraith teeth convey primarily negative effects when eaten. Not to mention the idea of consuming something so hard to chew and digest would likely upset any stomach. While many of these items are meant to be processed into potions, they can still be eaten, so the player can be curious about their effects. Just be sure to hold your nose and be within dashing distance of the nearest toilet. Or at least, try not to get your stomach contents on the wildlife. Did you enjoy the video? Why not click the bell icon and subscribe to see more content from us at tats.videos. And now let's see the creators of this video.